While agile approaches are often used in both enterprise and embedded software, sometimes they're a good fit and sometimes they're not. So it's useful to have a way to think about when they're a good fit and when maybe you need something a little bit different. Agile methods are at their best when there are small teams working on comparatively small code bases. That does not mean you can't do big things, but the sweet spot is a single small team with a small enough product that that team can handle the whole thing. It's good for everyday software quality, so the defect rate has to be moderately low, but it's not expected to be perfect. It can still provide value even if there's some small bugs. It's good for fast requirements change because every sprint you get a chance to do something different or do something new. It generally assumes highly skilled experts throughout the project and then includes during life cycle maintenance. So there's a small, highly skilled team that knows exactly what to do, exactly how to do it, and they're there to design it, but they're also stay around to improve it and maintain it during the life cycle. And if everything's in their heads, that's okay because it's the same team working for the whole life cycle. An important management consideration is that Agile is at its best when developers can handle being empowered, usually meaning they're senior. The point of Agile is we have a bunch of developers, they know what to do, they know how to do it, get out of their way and let them do it. And if that describes your group, Agile can work well. In contrast, plan-driven, traditional, and so that means maybe Waterfall and V, has a different sweet spot. It's at its best for large teams and large products. It's good for mission-critical products where every defect might possibly kill someone. So you don't say, well, we're pretty good. It's worth deploying. We'll fix the bugs later. Now you really have to get it right. So think about software that goes in airplanes for autopilots. It's good for stable requirements. So if you have faster changing requirements, plan-driven doesn't work as well. But if you know what your requirements are and they're not going to change much, plan-driven can be a lot more efficient. Plan-driven makes a conscious decision to put the high skill in the design phase, not in the detailed implementation phase. So what you assume is that as you're going down the via the waterfall, the earlier stages have the highly skilled people making the right trade-offs and making good design choices. If you're going to make a big change, you need your top experts really looking at it carefully because if they make a bad decision, the cost gets amplified as you go down through the rest of the process. However, the trade-off is, if you spend a lot of time in design and you have a rigorous process with enough paper to back it up, your developers do not have to all be senior. They don't have to all be able to be managers of themselves. So plan-driven works well if you have a lot of junior developers. That tends to correlate with large products. Let's face it, if you need 1,000 developers, it's going to be really hard to get 1,000 all senior people, all of them above average, to work on that project. You're going to have a mix of senior and junior, experienced, inexperienced, people who are good at managing, people who are not, and a plan-driven framework is going to be a lot easier to manage that kind of effort in.